It's Thursday, the 24th of February. Football mourns. England still shit. <laughs> McGuinness at White House. Another bang in the Oval Office. <laughs> Grammys. Big tits snubbed. Twat honoured. <laughs> Please welcome the man who's always a hit with the ladies, Mr. Ian Lee. <laughs> Welcome to the 11 o'clock show. Did you see the Grammys last night? Jesus, I haven't seen so many fake plastic smiles since my last girlfriend got a puncture. <laughs> it was a long show. We had to wait four whole hours before Sting came on stage. Still, that's tantric sex fear. <laughs> Takes weeks for him to shoot his load. There was, there was a large police presence and George Michael complained he felt security was too tight. Security then apologised and said he was a bit nervous. It was his first time. <laughs> Meanwhile, the eye of the needle. Meanwhile... <laughs> The youngsters were slugging it out. Christina Aguilera infuriated Britney Spears, Spears by not only bringing her own crowd, but also bringing her own breasts, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Who believe it? It's incredible, but true. Christina sang about being a genie in a bottle, which is fitting because half of us believe our dreams would come true if we just got to rub her three times. <laughs> the rest of us just wish she'd put a cork in it. Who knows? She probably has. <laughs> but enough of this pop star pondering. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Miss Daisy Donovan. <laughs> Now, don't be fooled again by my cheerful smile when I come on because Ooh. I am sick of all these sham PR romances. Today, it's Prince Andrew and Caprice. Yesterday, Cliff Richard and some publicity girl. I mean, it makes you doubt genuine loving relationships like mine with Graham Norton. Mm. <laughs> That's exactly what you mean, Daisy. Now, before you ask Ian, coming up on tonight's show, we've got a Hollywood superstar. Hi, I'm Jason Priestley. Later on, I'll be finding out what the British public thinks of me coming over here and stealing their jobs. Star of the Lakes and E-Generation movie Human Traffic, John Sim will be here to talk footy, Oasis and Hollywood. And our very own news eventer meets world record um, balloonist Brian Jones. Did God come to you and say, you know, in a dream, Brian, you know, be like a lion? No. <laughs> but now it's time for the headlines. Tonight's top stories. Tributes have been pouring in for footballing legend Sir Stanley Matthews. Bobby Charlton described him as magical, Keegan as sublime, while David Beckham said his turkey drumsticks really were bootiful. <laughs> <laughs> Police say they are worried by the increasing number of people using the internet to buy drugs. A drug squad spokesman said that people start off using the hash key and quickly become hooked on emails. <laughs> Save the Children made a moving appeal for helping the treatment of six-year-old New York boy Benedict Smith, who suffers from one of the world's rarest and most debilitating illnesses, Charles disease. <laughs> Meanwhile, there was strong reaction in London today as the BBC announced that the licence fee increase meant there would be a new series of Big Break. Oh, no, thank you! <laughs> Will Carling is to be a daddy again. The proud father-to-be has already packed his wife's suitcase. Not for the birth, he's kicking her out next week. <laughs> Railtrack staff are threatening strike action after complaining they're now just glorified Kit Kat sellers. Replying for Labour, John Prescott said this government will never... Mmm, Kit Kat. <laughs> and those were tonight's headlines. Sting, they just can't stop coming. The Americans are coming over to the UK in droves. Caprice, Kevin Spacey, Jason Priestley. Why do we keep employing these foreigners? Here's Jason Priestley with his report. Later this week, Sideman opens in the West End with the original Broadway cast. With so many talented American and Canadian actors coming to Britain, can British actors like Christopher Biggins survive? And more importantly, do the British public care? I've been sent to the Elephant and Castle to find out. How do you feel about uh, American actors coming over here to England and uh, performing in the West End and stealing jobs from English actors? There's no such thing as stealing jobs. If you're good enough for a job, you get the job. 
<laughs> How would you feel about uh, about the fact that they want to turn this area of Elephant and Castle into the new Hollywood? What do you think of that? Oh, I think it's crazy. It's, it's the Elephant and Castle, isn't it? Why do you come down here to Elephant and Castle? Is it for the is it for the for the big uh, big Hollywood celebrity types that just sort of loiter in this area? No, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to show you pictures of three actors. Could, yeah. could you tell me which one of those actors is your favorite? Is your favorite actor? Are they modern actors or old ones? Uh, well, here they're, uh, they're they're quite modern. They're quite modern. First of all, there's uh, there's this guy here. Yeah. And that that uh, like the world jewelry. Yeah, that's Mr. right. A. Mr. Yeah. T. Yeah, Mr. T. T. Yeah. And there's this guy here. That looks like Bruce Forsyth, doesn't he? <laughs> he did it, right? Who is it? Who is that? This name's Hulk Hogan. Never heard of him. Yeah, yeah. And then there's this guy here. Which one, uh, which, which one of these three actors would be your favorite actor, do you think? Oh. Well, I don't, I don't like him. No. I don't know him, so I'd pick that one. All right, well, there you go. Right. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate your time. Thanks. Oh, wait, here's somebody. Excuse me, sir. Sir, I'm filming for the 11 o'clock show. Can I ask you a few not, questions? Not really interesting. Thanks, sir. Cheers. Hey, what's your problem, man? <laughs> Who would you rather talk to on the street? A tall, lanky, pale English guy or uh, the star of a hit play in an American television series? I don't watch much American television series. <laughs> That's all right, neither do I. Okay. You're my best actor? Yeah. Oh, they're all rubbish, man. <laughs> <laughs> they're all rubbish, man. So there you have it. It appears that Hollywood may still rule when it comes to big-named actors, but when it comes to acting the goat, you can't beat the elephant and castle. This has been Jason Priestley for the 11 o'clock show, London. They call football the beautiful game, which is no surprise. <laughs> but with the death of the model professional, Sir Stanley Matthews, the question is, has the game got ugly and is anyone fit to fill his football boots? Whoever it is will need a good temperament, a belief in fair play and the respect of the public. If only Mo Mola had spent less time sorting out Ireland and more time working on a banana shot. <laughs> so for any footballers watching this at home, why not try our questionnaire to see if you've got what it takes to be the next Stanley Matthews. Here goes. Do you arrive for training wearing A... A cloth cap and hobnail boots, or B... A sarong and your wife's thong? <laughs> Before a big match, do you prepare by A... Having an early night and saying the Lord's Prayer. B. Having a fight in the nightclub and copping off with Melanie Sykes. Are you sponsored by A. Castlemaine 4X or B. Werther's Originals. After the match, do you A. Meet your lady friend in the clubhouse and enjoy a cheeky half of mild. B. Jam your bird's head in the bar and spray the fire hose up her jacksy. When your playing days are over, will you be remembered for A. Your amazing ball control and the sense of fair play. Or B. That time you went for a header and your coke addled nose fell off. <laughs> so if you answered mostly B's, you should spend less time on the piss and more time practicing your dribbling. And if you answered mostly A's, you do actually spend all your time dribbling and sitting in your own piss anyway. And that's our Cook It Out questionnaire. <laughs> now, if you're looking for informed, unbiased reflection on today's news, you don't need this man. But here he is anyway. Please acknowledge Ricky Gervais. Lee, don't ever just do it. So, Gervais, right. what have you seen in the news? Not doing the news. I'm oh. going to use my uh, no, shut up, platform on television, national television, to uh, launch a new venture. I've invented another game. And this one, it, I hope Waddington's are watching, because this is absolutely brilliant. Now, is this anywhere near as good as Ricky Gervais's penis puppet theatre? Hilarious. <laughs> it's better. Yeah. It's better, honestly. Right. This is Ricky Gervais's Tip the Balance. Tip okay? the Balance? Yeah. It's a game for two or more players. Like that, right? <laughs> no, listen. Let's have a go at this. It's a simple it? game. You've just got a simple scale there. OK? And all you have to do, there's a little rule book here, and there's only a couple of rules. All you've got to do is fill the bowl do, 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 and tip the balance! Fill it with what? <laughs> fill it with anything you want. You can piss in it. Um, <laughs> no, listen, you can vomit in it. You can... Oh. It'd be good at it. It'd be hard to beat. <laughs> if you do play against Ian, just remember, if he comes in to play like this, he's cheating, cos it's got to be your own. OK? Why? Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, hold on a second. Why are you talking about this when you're supposed to be talking about news? Well, because every time I talk about the news or do a VT, I end up sort of doing bad taste stuff and... Like offending someone. And you know the little researcher, Paul, the little you know, oh, kid yeah, in there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Scary. He came to me and he said, Mr. Gervais, he said, aren't Ricky. you worried um, that you, you insult people and soon all, all the people you've insulted are gang together, all the little ginger 
dwarves in wheelchairs. <laughs> and, they're, and they all come after you and they grab you and they're going up you and they beat absolutely you. Absolutely terrified. No, it's like me wanking. Oh, oh. God, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Get off! Fantasy, isn't it? Get off! Tip the, it, get, go tip, on. Tip the bonus. No, fuck off. Gervais, everyone. Gervais. <laughs> Gervais. Go on the board and please go. <laughs> well, thankfully, that's it for part one. Still to come in part two, Alex Lowe reports on the sorry state of Britain's armed forces. And star of the lakes and human traffic, John Sim, reviews the new Oasis album and last night's England match. But before the break, a bit of light relief with our topical catchphrase. Remember, just say what you see. What does Mr. Chip say? Yes, it's Dobson beats off living stone. <laughs> Welcome back to Love the Show, first of the twenty fourth of February. Still to come, you will be meeting the world record balloonist Brian Jones. But now, time to look at today's headlines. McGuinness visits Clinton, declines offer of cigar. Blair slides down poles, gets friction burns on his nuts. Caprice dates Prince Andrew, now wants to meet the Queen. Edward says, I'm busy filming. <laughs> Defence chiefs have come under fire as it was revealed that despite a £1,000 refit, RAF tornadoes in Kosovo were unable to drop new high-tech missiles. Here's Alex Lowe with his report. The armed forces came under fire today as it was revealed that a £1 billion upgrade of RAF tornadoes had left the jets less effective than before. <laughs> Experts are calling this the military's biggest embarrassment since those two bell ends from Soldier Soldier topped the charts. <laughs> the tornadoes were due to be fitted with the new version of the Thermal Imaging and Laser Designation System, TIALD. When correctly installed, it allows even American pilots to target missiles so accurately they can be fired through the post box of an Iraqi children's hospital. <laughs> the designer of the TIALD system has found himself defending his work, arguing, I spent four hours locked in a shed knocking that together, fool. <laughs> the maligned British defence industry also issued a statement defending their hardware. We feel these criticisms are wholly unfair. Those landmines we sold to Angola seem to work all right, and that Iraqi supergun would have been brilliant. <laughs> With Britain's air power seriously reduced, the army will now have to take the lead in the defence of the realm. This will mean a recruitment drive for more diverse groups, such as ethnic minorities, women and gay men. As part of this recruitment drive, the army have also released this new commercial. <laughs> Casa, sai da minha frente, meu! Cai fora! Ei! Ei! Você tá querendo o que é que é um bullet? Sua mãe é uma besta! Que que se... Ah, é? Ah, é? Have you got any guns or tanks we could borrow? Because ours are all fucked. <laughs> this is the latest in a long line of setbacks for the armed forces. Following revelations that new guns were prone to jamming, the new Challenger battle tank had a number of faults, and that the Navy's boats were the biggest load of shit on the high seas since Jane MacDonald. This has been Alex Lowe, the 11 o'clock show. R.E.F. Bryce Norton. Now time to tell you about tonight's guest. When he's not having casual sex in the lakes or popping pills in human traffic, he's plucking heart and guitar strings in his band. He's the finest actor and musician to come out of Nelson, Lancashire, and hopes the town will be renamed Sim City in his honour. Currently starring in Wonderland, please welcome Britain's next big thing, John Sim. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming along. It's nice mm -hmm. to see you. Now, John, you're tipped to be our next big star, so before you're whisked off to Hollywood, we're going to ask you some questions about football, music and fame, if that's all right. Go on, then. Do you mind? No. Yeah, we want to get down to the simple things. You're a big football fan. Yeah. What did you think of the England-Argentina match last night? Um, I thought it was a good game. I thought it was a good game. Uh, you know, after the Scotland debacle, I thought um, we played really well. I mean, Argentina won. But it was nil nil. Shouldn't we have won? Yeah, and it, yeah. We that, that's won, a girl's yeah. question. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they all look handsome? I really enjoyed that. But you thought it was a good game. Yeah, I thought we dominated it. Totally dominated it. What do you think you know. about Kevin Keegan as a manager? Is he good? Um, I don't know. I think it's a bit early to tell. I mean, uh, he's been good and then bad and then. But I think he's going to get it together. He can only do as well as his players are, you know. At least Kevin must have been happy he didn't get beaten. Exactly. I mean, I mean, he didn't stop in a lay-by on the way to the match. That's what I was doing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Do you think that Beckham should have got a yellow card last night for kicking the RG? 
I thought he was a bit unlucky, but you know. He does do that though. Well, Why? it's all right, kicking Argy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> now you're a Man United fan. Who's got Beckham by the bollocks, posh or Fergie? Um, it'd be great if Fergie did, but I, uh, I fear they've probably got one bollock each. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny resting on each face. That's horrible. The well-known one. <laughs> now, uh, Arsenal have allegedly offered thirty-five million pounds for Beckham. Do you think he'll leave Man United? I tell you, if, if he if, if oh. he goes to Arsenal, I'll I'll shoot loads of people. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell! Myself. <laughs> do you think he's worth it? Thirty-five million pounds. No, he's worth far more than that. Do you reckon? He's, he's a genius on the football field. He's you? a big punk. <laughs> 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 no, he's, worth, he's he's an amazing footballer, isn't he? I mean, come on, he's a great footballer. Yeah, he's worth that, but he better not go to Arsenal. Well, there's going to be a trouble. Threat. Now, there's a lot more play acting in football these days, isn't there? Is that why people like Cantona and Vinnie Jones are finding it easy to move into acting? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. Do you find so. it weird they're taking your jobs? Yeah, it's... Flipping liberty. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't mind Cantona because he's Eric Cantona, but um, Vinnie Jones, I, I don't know. I've only seen him in Lock Stock. I don't know if he's an actor. That's the only thing yeah. he's done, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So. But he's hanging out with Madonna and stuff like that. You must be jealous. He's been doing this for years. He's been at 20 minutes. He's meeting all these big stars. Whatever. I'm not bothered, really, to be honest. You sure are. I can tell. Yeah, all right. He's <laughs> <laughs> getting to you. Now, your other passion is music, and you've heard uh, the new Oasis album. Yeah. As have I. What do you reckon? Any good? Um, I like it. I think there's some good songs on it. Uh, I think it's it's nowhere near as good as the first one, but not a lot is. But um, it's a lot better than the last one. Uh, and the, the, the gun are really rocky, and I like them when they rock. They're great when they rock. Well, we've got a clip of the new video. Let's have a quick look at that. <laughs> I mean, do you know the Gallagher brothers? What are they like? Um, yeah, I've met them, yeah. Yeah, they're all right. They're good. Cool. Nice. Are they like they appear on the telly? No. What, like monkeys, like, like we that. did there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. With a couple of PG tips. No, um, no, they're all right. No, you're... Uh, when I say you're Noel's mate, do you actually know him? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do you know do. him, So, yeah. would you call Robbie that fat dancer from Take That? <laughs> OK. He's that fat dancer from Take That. <laughs> 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 Certainly not. Now, <laughs> have you ever been written about in a gossip column? Yeah. Why? What did they say? <laughs> um... The, there was a ridiculous one years and years and years ago that said I was like the character from the lakes and went off and took amphetamines with Ooh. pals in Blackpool in the news of the world. And um, they interviewed my dad and my dad wouldn't know an amphetamine if he jumped out of the toilet and bit him on the arse. <laughs> so we're just making it up. Now, we know you're destined for great things in Hollywood, but which way will your career go? Well, we've given it some thought and we think we've come up with the ideal role for you, John. A gritty drama with a northern working class hero it's got drugs and plenty of women. Take a look at this. Don't carry on, Shipman. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, John Sim. And for more on the story about the military cutbacks, we go over live to Alex Lowe at RAF Bryce Norton. Alex, have the government made any more statements? Well, Ian, to raise funds, the government are to sell off old military hardware. They've already sold off many of the popular Sherman tanks, which are now finding their way into the homes of wealthy collectors. Indeed, George Michael is known to be a big fan of the Sherman tank. <laughs> and have the government announced any other measures? Well, in the light of all their poor equipment, RAF pilots will no longer be expected to bomb Iraq, but to either pull a Mooney or do, a, like, a really bad flob out of the window. <laughs> the Navy will also have to make allowances for their reduced firepower. Um, HMS Invincible is now to be known as HMS Shit Our Pants and Run Away. Alex Lowe, thanks very much. Yeah, thanks, Ian. Now, they say that every cloud has a silver lining, except at the Met Office, where they dismiss such claims as archaic nonsense, but with a grain of metaphorical truth. To see whose week's been cloudy and whose is shiny, here's this week's good news, bad news. Good news. The Germans have bought the rights to The Muppet Show. Bad news. The plot takes a sinister turn when Beaker invades Poland. Bad news. <laughs> a survey of professions has revealed that teachers have the most trouble finding love. Good news. At least they get long holidays in which to feel desperately, terrifyingly lonely. <laughs> Good news. Nicotine may help sufferers of Alzheimer's disease. Bad news. They can't remember where they put their fags. <laughs> Bad news. Bill Clinton came 21st in a survey of America's best presidents. Good news. He came top of a list of presidents you can make knob jokes about, just ahead of Johnson. <laughs> Good news. Martine McCutcheon is the star in My Fair Lady. Bad news. My Fair Lady is a musical. <laughs> Good news. 
In a hilarious incident, Carol Vorderman pulled out the words arse and hole on countdown. Bad news. The laughter stopped when it turned out the conundrum was infanticide. <laughs> Good news. Melinda Messenger is to star in a feature film. Bad news. She's playing Gandhi. <laughs> and that was this week's Good News, Bad News. <laughs> the, the problem with TV is that it makes everything so slick and professional, you can't tell what's true and what's not. Uh, so how do we TV wizards do it? Well, here's our news avenger to show you how it's done. That's brilliant. I can almost hear his neck snapping. Now, don't fucking touch it. News is like a baby. If you cradle it, it sleeps. If you throw it around a bit, it screams blue murder. Don't be afraid to drop the baby on its head. That's the way news works best. Rolly T. Touch, you can touch it now. Touch it. You are? Brian Jones. And your data, remember, was? The day that Bertrand and I succeeded in uh, co-piloting a balloon around the world for the very first time. Do you want to talk about it? Yes. OK, let's talk. <laughs> I have to get out of my head to do this job, unlike my contemporaries not on showbiz sherbet. I get out of my head to get into other people's witness. Did you say to yourself, hang on matey, you know, I'm Brian Jones. I've had enough of these people crushing my spirit, crushing my dreams. You know, when those assholes see what I've done, they're going to come <laughs> and kiss my... <laughs> no. <laughs> You don't spend six months in Kosovo without learning to empathise with people. But that's what I'm paid for. I'm a professional. Physically. You know, was it a cold that was... I mean, if you could show me, is it... No, it wasn't close to death by cold or anything No, OK. I mean, it was cold enough to, to all of our that's water That's a shame. That frozen. would have been fantastic if you were that close to death. Oh, thank you. Well, <laughs> for, for my purposes. <laughs> In this game, you've got two minutes to make an epic. If it ain't big, go bigger. If you can't go bigger, call me. In a way, you took on God and you beat him. No, we shared the skies with him and he let us. Jesus. No, I don't think we beat anybody. Did God come to you and say, you know, in a dream, Brian, you know, be like a lion? No. Genius? Guilty as charged. Right, where's the fucking stiff? Oh, Jesus, Errol, you're breathing again. That's nearly all from tonight's show. But before we go, Martin McGuinness's trip to Washington today wasn't all about politics. In an attempt to win more visitors to Ireland, he took this tourist board video featuring Gerry Adams. Come to my constituency. Come and look at the British soldiers who still troop our streets. Come and look at the RUC who still patrol our streets. <laughs> and finally, Ricky Gervais tests the limits of taste and decency. Good night. Good night. Is it OK to make fun of disabled people on television? No, I don't think so. OK. Um, what if um, they're dwarves? But they're not disabled, are they? I mean, if someone's dwarf, doesn't mean they're disabled. What about the evil dwarves that hang around in gardens late at night in gangs? <laughs> I mean, what are they doing there is my question. What, what are they doing there? What are they doing there? I guess, um... Do you know, I actually haven't met any evil dwarfs. I've been... I wasn't aware 